Wah! Welcome back to the Red Ones Go Faster, the fastest growing Warhammer channel on all of YouTube. I am Old Big Mac, and in today's episode, we are seeing just how quickly we can add some reinforcements to our WAG. Let's get into it! <laughs> yes, indeed, this video is a fun one, and it's one I've been wanting to do for a long, long, long time, from even before I even had a YouTube channel. You see, I am also a great big YouTube consumer, <laughs> obviously, and one of my favorite video formats is the how long does it take to paint an army, or you know, how much painting can you do in 24 hours, and things like that, and I've always wanted to do something like that. I'm not quite there yet. You need kind of more filming rig setup for something like that to really be good. But what I can do is see just how long it takes to paint up one squad to reinforce your army. So since this is Orktober and all of our videos are Orc based all month long, uh, we are obviously painting an Orc squad. But this demo is going to be good for any army, right? It's just a painting style and kind of a you know, Q&A thing on just how fast you can add something to your army. It, and the reason why I think this is actually really intriguing is a lot of times we as players, right, we want to try something new or we've tried something and it works. And I'm like, oh, we really need another one or I need to make that unit bigger or something like that, right? There's almost always a need to quickly add a unit to your army to be able to go play a game. So this might not be the end result paint job that we're looking for, but it's enough to get it on the tabletop and match well enough with the rest of the army that you don't feel bad about using it. So that's the technique we're gonna use and I'm gonna set up a big stopwatch and we're gonna see just how long it takes for old Big Mac here to actually paint an entire squad of work boys. Let's try it. All right, here is our timer. I will have it up on the screen and hopefully it will be in the background of the shots. I will do my best, but we will hit the start button when we start painting. Again, I'm trying to manage all of this with just one camera and one rig set up that I have to move and uh, place in different areas to get the different shots. But there we go. We have it in the background of the shot and where the camera's positioned right now, I can flip it 180 um, and show what's going on on the paint desk, which we'll do. All right, here's our painting area. You can see Gaz and Makari are sitting there waiting for the finale. But what we are working on today is this squad of work boys uh, that we talked about earlier in the month. These are a mix of the newer boys and the older boys, uh, all with shooters, all on correct 32 millimeter bases. So I have 10 of them here. There are uh, eight regular shooter boys, one big shooter boy, and a knob with a power claw. And the technique I'm going to be used is uh, kind of based on a lot of the other fast techniques that are out there on YouTube right now, uh, such as Slap Chop, but we're gonna call it Slap Choppa because we're orcs. All right, I got my unit out, I got my paintbrush out, I got my paints ready, and uh, we're ready to go click the start button and get Slap slap choppa ing slap a choppa ing slap a choppa We'll go with Slap a choppa There we go, four seconds down already. All right, so the, the basis of this is just like any other underbrushing technique, and that is where you are going to uh, put kind of as much paint down as you can as fast as possible, and you're gonna use an undercoat to do that. And for this particular undercoat, I will be using Tamiya Gray uh, XF19, and what I'm gonna do is dry brush it with this dry brush all over the entire model. Basically what I wanna do is provide a contrast for underneath my shades and contrast type paints. Um, so this technique has been around fine art for a long time and other miniature painting and got real popular in Warhammer with the Slap Chop uh, episode, which is uh, totally cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very similar thing. And you just, you want a dry brush and you want the, uh, the most paint possible on the top of the model. So like light looking down. Uh, with the least on the bottom. And the idea here is to just kind of get all the raised edges uh, so that you've got some contrast for your paint to work with. Now, I know those of you that are like more display painters are looking at me going, oh my gosh, Big Mac, you are using way too much paint and you are being way too thick with it. Well, that's because we're doing slap a choppa and not slap chop. You see, uh, this is all about getting on the board as fast as possible, and the more time you spend messing around with this undercoat, the less time you spend getting paint on anything else. So boom, like that, that one is undercoated. It is a little bit of a faff to do that, but there we go. You can see 
two minutes on the clock, so in less than two minutes, I got an undercoat on one guy. Now, yes, it is messy, but we're going to be covering that up a lot. So it's really only there for certain things like uh, the skin and the pants uh, and a little bit of the, um, uh, like the chopper, the metal and stuff. So some of the other things we are going to completely cover with opaque paint so it doesn't matter that they get messy. All right, we'll put him to the side and just keep on going. So I want to throw a huge shout out to uh, one of our viewers uh, whose screen name is Justin. Uh, he joined our Patreon this morning and he became our first ever paid patron. So uh, that was super awesome. Thank you so much for believing in old Big Mech and what we're doing here. Um, had a little message talk with him back and forth and him and his grot are starting Warhammer 40k. And uh, they decided to go with orcs based on one of my videos on saving lots of teeth, which is awesome. Uh, most of you viewers know that I got a bunch of grots myself, and uh, they just about all are into Warhammer building and painting and things like that. And uh, yeah, so it's super awesome to see families. That's that's what it's all about, right? You, anytime your kid's playing with Warhammer stuff on with a paintbrush, that is less uh, screen time that they're doing, right? And uh, more time spending with the family, having fun, being creative. Um, yeah, so super, super awesome. Really appreciate that. So again, I am being like super quick, super messy. It's okay. It doesn't matter. It's a little bit of an underbrush. Think of it more like a brush done Zenithal highlight, uh, more than like a true proper dry brushing, um, or, you know, slap chop type technique. Again, this is all quick and dirty. We're trying to get this unit out on the table as quick as humanly possible, uh, because, hey, maybe we have a game tonight and uh, we need one more unit of boys to go do our game and figure out what we're doing. The other thing it's going to do is it, is being quick like this is giving us some variation, right? This big shooter boy ended up pretty dark and uh, this shooter boy ended up pretty light. So when I do my skin tones on them, these two guys are going to have two very different skin tones, even if I use the exact same color on them, which is something that my whole army features. The other thing you'll notice that I'm doing is getting everywhere with this brushing and not just on the top. I'm trying to be a little heavier on the top than the bottom, but I am still getting the bottom. I do still want some contrast there. I do still want some highlight, some zenithal uh, so to give my paint something to work with. But again, you're not trying to paint the whole thing. You don't want the whole thing gray. You still want blacks underneath. It's almost like a reverse shading so um, if you think about it like if you had primered these guys gray and then given everything a wash with known oil before painting you'd end up with kind of the same effect it you know sort of All right, that's it, that's all 10. And six minutes on the clock. So uh, in six minutes, even with the talking and the camera faffing, I've managed to get an undercoat on all 10 of these boys. So you can see this technique is all about speed, 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 speed. We're, we're again, we're just trying to get them on the board. Uh, we're not really looking for, um, you know, this is not display quality paint job, right? This is, uh, Tabletop, right? We are getting on the tabletop. You can always go back later and clean up your paint and and add more details and things, which is you know something that I've kind of done a lot as a painter. All right, we are switching from the dry brush to a, a larger brush, and it is time to start breaking out the contrast paints. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually work on the flesh. You want to work from the inside out, so that means. Whatever detail is the closest to the skin of the model, whether it's the actual skin itself or something else, uh, that's what you want to paint first, and then uh, you paint things that are on top of it. So, for example, this knob here, I would paint his skin first, 
then his coat second, and then the armor panel on top of the coat third. The idea being you don't want to have to get past things you've already painted to get into somewhere else. So we are definitely starting with the flesh. Uh, so what I've got here is a Games Workshop, um, the Orc Flesh uh, Contrast Paint. Um, and we are just slapping that right on all of his skin. Now, again, all about speed. You can see I'm being a little messy. Some of it is getting up on the coat and stuff. It really doesn't matter. You want to try to be maybe uh, a little clean, but you don't have to be perfect. Uh, again, we are going for an overall effect here, and we're going to have um, some things to help us along uh, toward the end in order to help cover up and mitigate some of these mistakes and still have the models look good on the tabletop. So what I want to do is just kind of get in here and get all of his flesh. Let's see, he's got some of his back. No, he's wearing a coat. Okay, so he's just got his bicep for his power claw and then his other arm up here uh, up until the little stump that is a cyborg enhancement. And there we go. So he's got some green on him, right? So now we've got black, we've got some gray, we've got some green. Um, not quite what I would call three color yet, but definitely starting to look more like a mini. Now, uh, I've got this idea of doing an entire army like this where you do it black and gray, and then you paint the skin, and then you paint a bunch of red blood all over it. I think it would look awesome on like a chaos army. Um, and uh, yeah, would would be really interested in trying something like that and seeing, you know, just how quick you can paint a whole army that has like this really big pop on the uh, on the battlefield, but you know, is kind of just this messy, super easy to do thing. All right, so he's gonna be a little harder. He's got a lot of skin, and it is uh, like all around the weapon and things. Just trying to get in there. This is the great part about acrylic paints is they dry so fast you can um, get in there and keep working and doing things like this versus if you were using uh, enamels like old school testers or oils or things like that. You'd be drying forever. You'd be playing with a uh, hairdryer and things like that. We don't have that kind of time. I mean, nobody got no time for that. All right, so boom, his flesh is done. We'll move it along. Done. All right, and we are at 18, almost 19 minutes. Um, so obviously, again, talking to the camera, moving things around. Uh, I'm also, you know, cleaning my brushes and things like that. But yeah, less than 20 minutes now, we have our squad in colors. Now, some of them, I did do a, a different contrast paint. This one is Creed Camo. Uh, so again, that variation in the amount of gray that I put on and um, what color green I used to overcoat it. Um, gives me some variations in skin tone. So now we're going to move to the clothing. We're going to pick out a nice brown. I've got some uh, snake bite leather and some Gargax sewer, and uh, we'll just slap those on in different places. Let's get into it. So, what we want to do here is orcs often have uh, leather coats and leather pants, right? So, you want to kind of vary your browns that you're using. Good old snake bite leather is a pretty a uh, good brown, a uh, little bit on the red side, a little bit on the muddy side, um, and pretty bright. Um, Gargax sewer is a little darker. You've got other ones out there too. Um, you know, the color itself doesn't matter. What you want is a contrast though between the colors that you are using. So if you have a lighter brown uh, for one of the, the browns, make sure you have a darker brown for the other. Or uh, maybe you want to do black leather or, you know, maybe your orcs wear the color of their clans and you're, you know, painting a bunch of yellow bad moons or, uh, you know, blue death skulls or whatever the case may be. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're, you've got some contrast in your colors and you don't have um, a bunch of this, like, really similar tone uh, colors because that's going to kind of muddy up your paint job. So now that you can see he's got this light brown coat on him. If I did the same color on his pants, that's going to look kind of weird. So i uh, going to need to do his pants a different color. But look at him. Make sure he doesn't have any other spots that this particular color needs to go. I do want to put a little inside there. Um, and yeah, call that color good on that particular model and keep going. First thing of brown done at 27 minutes. 
Now here's where you could get really cunning uh, if you wanted to, especially if you're doing like a tournament thing and really just need the three colors. You could do the skin and then do all of the clothing in the, the brown or you know whatever color your army is, uh, and then just paint the metallic on it, uh, and then throw the base and you're done, right? So then you could do like, like I said, like a whole army like that. Again, I think doing like a Chaos style army, like Chaos Stevens or something would be really cool. But uh, for the orcs, you're gonna need more colors than that. We're kind of a cacophony. Uh, one of the things I did is you'll notice some of them I've painted the pants the light brown, and some of them I've painted the tops the light brown. Again, trying to give variation to the squad, uh, but still tie them all together with the same colors and the same tones and the same values. Uh, but having things in different places, it's going to make the squad look cohesive while also making it look suitably random and orky. So now I'm going to switch to my darker color. All right, we are at 37 minutes, and now the second brown is done. And now it's starting to both look like a squad and look really, really messy at the same time. This is where you trust the process because things are going to look bad before they look great. So you can see we've got uh, two colors on here now. Uh, there are two different shades of the brown. There's a lighter brown and a darker brown. And again, having that variation helps where you've got some that are dark on top and light on the bottom, some that are light on the bottom, or you know, vice versa. Uh, but some of the things that I've done is you can see uh, I've painted some of the straps darker uh, on, right on top of the light just to, again, kind of give some contrast, you know, or vice versa, um, have some straps that are lighter on the darker color brown. So, again, it's a it's a pretty even tone, It's um, but you are looking for a little bit of contrast on there, and that's what we have gone for. So now is where we start differing from the slap chop and the things of that nature. And we start getting into being more slap a choppa and doing things old Big Mac's way. And that is the next color we are going to do is a metallic. And that metallic is going to be a regular paint. It is not going to be a transparent at all. We are not doing contrast. We are pulling out a true metallic metal and we are throwing it on all the metal stuff right now. So this is where this process really starts to differ and the miniatures really start to come alive. Again, we're, we're throwing it down. We're not necessarily covering every little thing. So if there's um, still some black down in the recesses uh, or still some gray here and there, that is okay. What we want to do is get a majority of coverage on the metallic part with the metallic paint. Part of the reason for doing this is it tricks your brain, right? Our, uh, our human brains and even our orky ones are trained to look for things that are different or look for mistakes, but also only look at them in areas that matter. So, you know, now that power claw is painted metal and it took, what, mere seconds? And if you look at it real close, it's not perfect. It's got black down in the recesses. It's got some gray here and there. It doesn't have full coverage, but when you come back, and you just look at it on the table, it looks like the whole claw is metal. And that's the whole point. What you're going for is a squad that looks good on the table, not necessarily a squad that, you know, this is not a Golden Demon entry, obviously. This is not a crystal brush. This is, I have a game tonight, and I need this extra squad of boys, and I'm going to slap them out as quick as I humanly can so that I can go play my game and have that enjoyment because that is what I'm going after here today. Uh, so yeah, we'll do the uh, the cyborg hand here, and again, on purpose, not getting everything, leaving some black in the shadows and things like that. Almost kind of sort of a little bit of dry brushing as the brush starts to run out in order to let it have those areas. So I'm going to do all of the metallics on all of the orcs, and then we'll get to our next color. Now this being the knob, he's going to have the most metallic bits and the most things to paint and the most colors, which is why I start with him every time because he's both the hardest one to do and the one that um, is going to need the longest time to dry in order for the effect to work. I am being careful to try to not to get the horns because we do kind of want to leave those white, uh, but everything else is getting the metal treatment as it is supposed to. Get the shoulder pad up there. We got one on the other side as well. Along with this back spiky thing here. Boom like that. See, and then 
it up here. I want that one to be metal and the other one is gonna be my army color. So we'll go ahead and slap that on there now. Make sure to get the edges. All right, and then the actual pole itself will do. There's little brackets there in the back. As well as our custom shooter here in the back that he's got on in his backpack. Okay. Looking real carefully, we've got this little fist thingy here on his belt buckle and a couple of buckles down there. Just hit the ridges with. He's got this stick bomb. We'll go ahead and throw some metallic on that. and the toes of his boots there. All right, so look at the difference between what he looked like before and what he looked like now, right? This is tabletop ready. You've got a skin color, you've got a couple of clothing colors, you've got a metal color. Is it the greatest? No, but is it better than a gray plastic thing? Absolutely yes, um, and you can see you know, it does tie in the look a lot better than the gray. So I'm gonna do the metal on the rest of them. Here's where both going from the inside out on our technique and being a little messy is working in our favor. So you can see here, he's got this little top piece of metal, right? There is some brown on that for me going over. And now I can just put the metal right on top of that brown. And now that mistake is gone. And I didn't have to be as precise painting the brown. I was able to be faster and now just get the metal on there. All right less than an hour and we're really starting to look like a squad and again this is 10 orc boys uh that we're doing this with and uh so yeah to get enough paint on them in an hour to actually look like a squad is pretty cool so i'm going to show you what they look like on the tabletop right now again if you wanted to throw a base color on the base right now um you could run these guys here is the squad as of the moment. You can see the silver details really did a lot to clean up the paint job of the boys and kind of tie everything together. Now you will notice that there is definitely some areas that are still all white, uh, like the boots, and that's where the next color is gonna come in, which is black. So once again, this is where it differs from like a pure slap chop. We're not gonna use a contrast or anything like that. I'm gonna use fully opaque flat black paint for all of the black details. It's gonna help me clean things up and crisp things up so that the whole like uh, paint job doesn't look like a bunch of slapped on contrast. You want to have differences between things that are a natural material like skin uh, or clothing and things that are metallic like the metals and things that um, like just need to have a different sheen to it. So having the bright gloss of the metallic the mat of the uh, the contrast and then the full flat on the black that's going to help trick your eye into thinking it's a much better paint job than it actually is and now here i have only my second brush change i am going from the uh, larger regiment brush from uh, army painter uh, down to a character brush uh, because now i'm ready to get into smaller uh, detail areas i'm also switching paints uh, to a Tamiya. Again, this is XF1 flat black. Again, I like the ultra flatness of the Tamiyas. I like how thin it is coming out of the pot. You don't have to thin it down. And when you're actually going for precision painting uh, and things like that, this is definitely where you want to be. It's also much, much cheaper per pot uh, than a Games Workshop item. So, you know, something to be said there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to his boots and I am going to do his boots in black because that's going to provide a bunch of contrast uh, to the metal on his toes and the browns on his pants. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to allow me to help tie in uh, those, those last features that we're going to do that's going to make the squad really punch above its weight, which is the weathering powder. All right, it's been an hour and 12 and we are done with the black. So that didn't take uh, as much time as I was feeling like it did, uh, which is good. Uh, basically what I did is I painted all the boots, I painted all the barrel ends, 
and um, some random straps and things. So basically anything that I missed in the brown stage, uh, so like for example the straps here over the brown leather on uh, uh, his backpack thing, um, the brown on brown on brown just wasn't looking right, so throw some black on those particular straps and it makes that contrast look much better. Now you can see the flatness of the black on those boots working really well in contrast with the metallic metals and he's really coming along. Um, some other things I've done is uh, the gloves are a different paint color on all the guys with the gloves. Some have dark brown, some have light brown, some have black. It's all been kind of random happenstance. This one I did consciously go, oh hey, he's holding a magazine, I'm going to paint metal. I'm going to paint his glove black just to give it the most contrast. Now, what that has done is given us, again, the squad that is starting to look really good. But now it's time to give it color pop. This is where... Um, having your army color really makes a difference. Having this bright honkin' accent color, you guys all know if you've watched any of my videos, to me, X6 Orange is my orc's color. So, all the little banner things and armbands and glyphs and things that don't already have paint on them are about to become orange, and you're going to see this squad really change. All right, here's the squad without orange. Let's pop it open, put it all on, and then show you the after. And check that out. We are at a hour and 27, almost 28 minutes now with the orange on there as well. And as you can see, when you are scaled back a little bit, you are looking at it as an army on the table, as a squad, as compared to as compared to up close. They kind of pop, right? You've got this nice orange contrast, and that's one of the reasons why I chose this particular color as my contrast color on my army. I wanted something that was going to contrast with the green and the natural browns and stuff that all the uh, you know infantry were going to be and then coexist really well with the red that all of the vehicles are. And so for me that landed on the orange. It was also a plus that it wasn't tied to any of the clans because uh, I'm not you know so much into being a goth or a, a you know bad moon or anything like that. And so that was my color choice. But your color choice um, you know is up to you. It doesn't matter. It, you just want to do something that is bright and contrasting to draw the eye into the cohesiveness of the army. Now, when you get them up close and look at them, um, they look decent, right? Uh, again, you slap a base color on the base, uh, and this guy's looking pretty well and done. Maybe a little bit of null oil on the metal if you wanted to tone it down a little. What I'm going to do now is spend a couple of minutes going through each and every guy doing a couple of particular things that I always do. So all of these little eye lenses I'm going to do with my clear blue. Uh, I'm going to throw some red in the mouth uh, and some white on the teeth and the horns as well as any of the skulls that are left laying around um, and just kind of literally spend a couple of minutes on each guy um, in order to get them looking you know, more presentable than just uh, tabletop. But again, in less than an hour and a half, I have this entire squad you know, really ready to go. All right, you can see behind me here, we just clicked over uh, an hour and a half, and I'm gonna start that little bit of detailing. All right, first trick color is done, and that is the uh, Flesh Terror's Red Contrast. What I do is I, I throw that in the mouth of all of them, uh, and then come back later after it's dry to rub some white on the teeth. Uh, I've also made sure to do a little blood on the Power Claw and get any eyeballs that I see. And we're sitting at 135 on that one, so it only took about five minutes. Now, uh, this next one is really going to bring some detail to quite a few of these, and that is to do some gold. I'm using the excellent Retributor armor uh, from Citadel. And you can see, like, on this particular shooter boy, he's got all the shell casings coming out the side. That doesn't look great on inspection. Slap a little gold on it, see how it looks. And check that out. Right? Much better now when you look at it. Uh, on the board and both picking it up and looking at it, you can tell that that detail's been painted uh, and it helps bring more of, you know, it looking like a very intentional uh, and well done paint job. Um, as you guys know, I'm a big speed buggy enthusiast, you know, real cars, and uh, there's a, a David Freiberger who's edited Hot Rod Forever and, and does their TV shows and all that. He's got a really popular phrase, which is, don't get it right, get it running. Uh, and I think that that phrase really works in Warhammer 40k, especially army painting, because what would you rather have? A bunch of gray plastic, you know, laying around in your closet or something painted to this level on the board? You know, again, you're not going to go in a golden demon with it, but you're not going to enter one anyway. So why not get him on the board and this boy can go bring you some more DACA? 
So once again, we want to draw eyes to the details that matter and not necessarily all of them. So while I'm not going to, you know, highlight his little leather pouch that's hiding, making sure that the bullet that is hanging off of his shoulder pad is the proper color and painted and it helps show that, oh yeah, he's a shooter boy. He's really cool. Uh, but again, you know, the, the little leather pad way down there, no one's going to look at that. You're going to see this bullet that's literally out in the wind. All right, we're at less than an, an hour 45 and we're on to the white and I'm not using a pure white. Again, using it to me, I want something thin. I want something that is very opaque. And in this case, I want something that's not a pure white. Orcs don't brush their teeth. Their, <laughs> their teeth aren't gonna be a pure white. And also, uh, you know, any skulls and things that are hanging off of their uh, bags and whatever, um, they're gonna age a bit. Plus we're going to do a sepia wash uh, on most of it anyway. So again, a, a pure white, you're gonna get kind of this really stark, something that is a very close to white, but an off white, um, I'm using this warmer tone deck tan, um, you know, can really help pull that together. Here's an example of why you wanna do the white. So see his face there, we got that little bit of red in his mouth, um, but you know, the actual face really isn't, you know, all that great to look at. And when you pick up a mini and look at it, that is the focal point. So we're gonna put a little bit of this deck tan on the teeth and show you what it looks like. Boom, just like that. Now look at how much more that face pops out at you, how much more even from further back right like it's got more of a face to it. it and again it's not about getting it perfect it's not even about getting every tooth you want to get the ones that are really visible and it's going to trick the brain into thinking that all of them are done that trick works on fingernails too you can see this particular orc his hand is holding up this uh you know clip getting ready to put it in the this the uh shooter uh so if we paint those nails we don't necessarily have to paint the ones on the ones holding the actual shooter uh, because you can't really see them but because these ones are going to be painted when you pick it up and look at it you're going to think oh they're all done all right and we're on to ringlets so basically if you look at the orcs a lot of them have nose rings earrings um, and then there's these little belt buckles and things all over them now again you don't want to paint all of them but the ones that are bright and prominent like this guy's got a giant one right here on his nose if we take just a couple of seconds to do that and any of the other ones that are like right in our face, it's going to make us think they're all done. So again, got his face and I got just this one there on his butt. I didn't actually do the one in the inside of his back there because you really can't see much of it or any of the ones like kind of in his legs or in his boots or anything, but the one right there on his butt and the, the one on his face and his earrings, um, you just knock those out super quick and it adds a bunch of detail. The other thing we're doing is putting a little touch of silver on the tip of any of the whole bullets that are used as decorations on these guys. Again, it's not even a second, right? And it really makes that one stand out and look like it's been well detailed. All right, we are just over two minutes now and uh, I am breaking out the Nuln Oil finally. We're gonna put a little bit of a wash on uh, the bright silvers and anywhere uh, that looks still just a little bit too bright down in the shadows, anything like that, uh, in order to grim dark it down a bit. All right, so we're letting the wash do the work for us, right? It's getting into the recesses, especially there in his cyborg arm, uh, there on his uh, belt buckle, um, and you know, the power claw to really kind of bring out the definition in all of those areas. And again, we're going to do the Nuln Oil on the metallics and um, anywhere that looks like it needs a little bit of darkening up, um, anywhere on the skin, the leathers, things like that. And then we'll use the much lighter Seraphim Sepia on uh, the orange parts and the, uh, the deck tan white parts, things like that. All right, the big shooter boy is probably going to be the biggest transition. So here he is before, right? We've got the, um, the lead belcher that we used on him uh, on all the metallics and a little bit of that silver uh, when I was doing the, the rings and things, uh, a little bit just kind of on the top here and there. Now we're going to darken it all up with the Nuln Oil. And take a look, right? Isn't that a little bit of a difference, right? You've got way more definition up there on the shoulder pad. You've got more definition in the actual big shooter itself. Uh, it's darkened him up a little, it's tied everything together. Uh, there's little extra clips back there, right? Like it just helps bring it all together. And, and again, the CP is gonna do that now on everything else. And with that, two hours and 18, almost 19 minutes, I am calling them done.
And look at that boy squad. I mean, if you saw that on the table, you would think that's pretty decent tabletop quality, right? You pick up the leader. He's got some extra details, right? He's got the blue on his glass thing, the red blood on his claw. You've got skin and leather and black and bone and orange and all the details that matter do pop. And when you look at the other boys, even if you do pick one up and look at them pretty close, like... They're not bad. Like for a basic troop squad, this totally works. It was less than two and a half hours to do the whole squad. Now I do still have to do the base, but I've covered that uh, in depth in another video. Basically, I'm gonna paint the base rim this color here and then put my acrylic stuff on the top, the texture paint that will dry overnight. Uh, so I could go take these boys and use them in my uh, game right now. Uh, but if I've got my game tomorrow, I can put my basing stuff down and then they will be ready to go. All right, uh, again, just under two hours and 20 minutes, but basing makes an army. Uh, so I am going to throw that base color on and then I'll do my uh, acrylic uh, paste later on. It's a race against the clock. I got a minute and a half left and I am on the last base. And done. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, we are going to call it there. And here is our completed orc boy squad. We've got 10 of them. Again, eight with shooters. One with a big shooter and the knob with the power claw. They are fully painted. They are based enough to uh, go and play in a tournament. Again, what I'm going to do is tonight while I'm editing and uploading this video for you viewers, I will put my um, acrylic stuff on, which is the uh, AK Interactive's uh, Sandy Desert Acrylic, because that stuff takes a long time to dry. So I like to do it at the very end of the night. Uh, so that's got all night to dry and get all crackly on the top. Put all my tufts on in the morning. Uh, and these guys will be completely done. And you know what? They really look pretty darn good. In fact, just to show how good these look, this is one of my uh, regular boy squad knobs. Uh, in fact, this is the first one that I repainted uh, since starting this orc army up again. Um, so this was done in about ooh, 2019, early 2019. Uh, and here is his new equivalent. So if anything, this faster painting almost looks better uh, in certain areas than the original does. You can see I don't have a wash on that particular skull or anything like that. So even though I have some better highlighting here on uh, the Slugga, um, you know, overall, especially down on the tabletop, it really makes no difference. Whereas this guy probably took two and a half hours by himself. In finality, here is the new squad all done. Next to a squad of boys that, again, probably took a couple hours each boy. So I've got you know, probably 20 hours worth of painting invested in that squad versus two and a half hours in that squad. And when you zoom back and think about tabletop, do you really see any difference? <laughs> so there you go. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this episode. It is one of my longer ones, and frankly, it takes a long time uh, to do a video like this in between all of the setup and prep beforehand. You know, I had to build all the boys, uh, undercoat all of them, get everything ready and set for the filming, make sure that I had uh, a couple of three hours of time in a chunk to paint them. And then, of course, uh, only having the one camera rig set up makes it really hard to get any kind of different shots. I have to pause and spend my time, you know, messing with camera uh, versus actually just painting. Uh, so that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching a video and if you feel like helping out at all if you like what you see if you like what i've been doing for orctober or warhammer 40k in general um there are a number of ways you can you know express that in between clicking like or dislike if you didn't like the video uh consider becoming a subscriber or visiting us over on patreon there's a link down in the description below um again we're, we're starting to cultivate a little bit of a patreon going um on and what it's going to be is uh even at the free level on Patreon, you're going to have access to exclusive content. So I'm not going to paywall any of the content. Um, the paid members basically will uh, get kind of um, more feedback, first dibs, things like that. Fun things uh, to show appreciation. But all of the content will either be here on YouTube or over on Patreon for free. Uh, so, you know, it, and there will be exclusives that are just Patreon. In fact, I have an entire how-to video on painting glass, like bottles and lenses and things like that, uh, that we used my uh, Boomdack Snazwagon for. So if you're interested in checking that out, 
definitely take a look at the link. The other thing we do is share some of the things that shouldn't quite be totally out there. <laughs> One of which being how to get a hold of this book right here, a hardcover reprint of the original WOG Orc. So again, nothing um, illegal about it or anything like that, but you know, G-Dub lawyers, you don't want them sniff around too much. Uh, so throwing links out just willy-nilly isn't uh, isn't very cool. But if you join our Patreon, we do have the post there with the link on where you can purchase this particular book, which is really cool. One of the things we're working on is a way to make more of these. Um, I've got some of the older uh, softcover books to so do some of the uh, viewers and patrons, and we're kind of in discussions on figuring out how to get more of these reprinted in this way. Um, so if that's something you're interested in helping out with again visit us over on patreon um, once again i can't thank you all enough for your support over this or october we are definitely the fastest growing warhammer channel on youtube it's been amazing watching everything just ramp up as you all get so excited with me this or october getting my wa built and painted and on the tabletop we've added another 10 boys and another whole unit bringing our total for October to 33 miniatures and nine units. So uh, my little goal in my head was 10 units, 31 miniatures, you know, a miniature a day, uh, and then 10 units. And uh, yeah, we're, we're right there. One more unit and we're good to go. I know I got a Gazgul Thraka sitting over there waiting for me for the finale. So I should probably go get cracking on him. I'm going to do a little bit better than slap a chop on him for sure because Gazgul deserves it right? <laughs> Anyways, thanks again so much everyone for being here with me today. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something uh, and we'll see you down in the comments below and until next time, WOG ON!